We sequenced the zebrafish genome to a very high standard so that we could really know what the direct comparisons between human genes and zebrafish genes are. I know it seems like an odd choice to study zebrafish, especially when looking at human disease genes. Zebrafish are very easy to maintain in the lab in large numbers. Uh, the embryos are essentially transparent and that means that you can see every cell as the embryos develop. The genome is extremely similar. So 70% of human genes have a zebrafish counterpart. And if you look at the, the disease genes in human, what we find is that 84% of disease genes in human have a zebrafish counterpart. So for example, the greatest cause of muscular dystrophy in humans are mutations in a gene called dystrophin. And zebrafish have a dystrophin gene, it's very similar. Mutations in the zebrafish dystrophin gene give zebrafish muscular dystrophy as well. 84% of the genes in zebrafish are similar to the genes that are in the human genome. So the idea would be to use a model organism such as zebrafish to try and work out exactly what those genes do. We're then able to use methods in the lab where we can make changes within these genes and identify the changes by using high throughput sequencing. This then allows you to make families which contain changes within certain genes, specific genes, and then look at the consequences of the loss of function of those genes within those families. And this allows you, in a systematic way, to go through all the genes in the genome and work out what a loss of function in each gene would do to the zebrafish. It's kind of like if you have a car, for example, and you go in and you systematically alter each part of the car, one part at a time, and ask, does the car still work? And if it doesn't work, how is it not working? We're trying to do that with zebrafish. Because the zebrafish genes are so similar to human genes, our, our understanding of human biology will be enhanced by this. So far we have identified variations in close to 40% of zebrafish genes and we have described the effects of those variations for about 1200 genes. Once we've identified the variations in the zebrafish genes, we look at the changes that are caused by those variations. We describe those changes and put the descriptions into a database. We then hope that clinicians can go in, compare those descriptions to the symptoms they find in their patients, and that might help them to identify the gene that is underlying the disease that the patient is showing. All of the mutations that we created are available both from the US and Europe in stock centres. So researchers all around the world can get hold of the individual fish and do their own experiments from the zebrafish models that we've created. Our study is very much in the tradition of previous zebrafish screens, but we have developed a method that now allows us to look at multiple variations and their consequences at the same time. And that very much speeds up the process and makes it also more cost effective. We developed this zebrafish mutation resource funded by the Wellcome Trust to help scientists and doctors understand how gene variation affects inheritance of disease and susceptibility to disease. So, for example, we can construct a mutation in zebrafish that's very similar to the human mutation and then use the zebrafish as a tool for screening for new drugs. The goal of biomedical research in general is to improve human health, and we hope to improve human health by studying zebrafish genes.